I'm Chris, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at how to calculate slope. So slope basically means the steepness of a line. If you walk up a hill with a steep slope, that means that it's a very steep hill. If you walk up with a hill with a smaller slope, that means it's a little bit easier to climb. In terms of math, we oftentimes hear about slope used when talking about graphing as rise over run, but the equation for slope is what we're going to focus on in this lesson so that we can make sure if given two coordinates that we know exactly how to plug those values in to solve for slope. So the variable that is used for slope when you have slope intercept form is m, and the way that we calculate slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now a lot of times Students look at a formula like this, and it looks kind of complicated, but the basic idea is that rise over run concept. The difference in your y values will tell you how far up you're going, and then the difference in your x values will tell you how far over you're going. So you're calculating rise over run by plugging in this formula. Now the next step is we need to decide how to label these coordinates. We know that each coordinate inside of a parenthesis is written with your x value first, comma, and then your y value. But how do we know which one is x1 or x2, which one is y1 or y2 as it relates to this formula? So the nice thing about this is that it actually doesn't matter which set you label as x1, y1, or x2, y2. As long as you pair the ones together and the twos together when you're labeling, you'll be in good shape. So here, we call this x1 and this y1 and this x2 and this y2. Then to solve for slope between these two points, we simply plug it in to this formula. So here, y2 minus y1, so it would be negative 1 minus 3, over x2, which is 2, minus 4, will give us a negative 4 divided by a negative 2 which is a positive 2, and that would be the value of slope between these two, two coordinates. Now, we're going to take a look at how to find slope of parallel and perpendicular lines in our next lesson. So please feel free to click on the link over here so that you can watch slope part 2, where we now take this value of slope, but then we apply it specifically to parallel and perpendicular lines, because that's a common question that will come up both in math classes, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 classes, and on SATs, ACTs, GREs, GMATs, and lots of standardized tests. So it's an important concept to make sure that we're familiar with, and we'll take a look at that in our next video. Thanks for watching.